Another important reflection of the associations of silence and wisdom is the striking presence of silent animals in a variety of contexts. Many divination systems often employ silent animals as agents of oracular messages from the other world, as the presence of silence itself is also a part of folktales and how they perform in the beliefs of people to whom they are told. Which bring us to Western Africa, where spiders are portrayed both as trickster figures and as emblematic of wisdom. Particularly the mythological silent spider Anansi, a trickster god among the Ashanti people of present-day Ghana. Although he is depicted in many different ways, Anansi often takes the shape of a spider with the half-upper body of a man, or in some occasion is solely wearing a man's face. He is considered by most as the god of all knowledge of stories, and owes his name based on a word which stands for spider in the Akan language in Ghana. As his reputation grew throughout West Africa and even beyond, he earned multiple names depending on the location his spider tales are told. He is often referred to as Kwaku Anansi, a figure renowned for his cleverness and ingenuity, his ability to outsmart and triumph over more powerful opponents through his use of cunning, creativity and wit. And despite being commonly recognized as the trickster god, the different actions of Anansi often carry him as protagonist due to his ability to transform his apparent weaknesses into virtues. According to Ashanti myths, Anansi is the son of the earth goddess Asaseya, and the sky god Nyami. He is perceived as a lesser divinity in Akan spirituality, who served as the intermediary of the supreme being and other deities who often bestowed him with temporary supernatural powers. In popular tales, he is primarily accountable for the creation of the sun, the moon and the stars, and therefore responsible for the separation between nights and days. He is credited by some to have been able to bring rain and floods on behalf of his father, and was seen as having taught people how to sow grain and how to use a shovel in plantation fields. Anansi is a quite popular character involved in the tales of West African mythology, as well as African American and the Caribbean folklore. There are so many myths surrounding the spider trickster of the Ashanti people of Ghana, but the most popular tale about him tells how Anansi came to own all the stories that are told. In the beginning, all tales belonged to Nyami his father who kept them away from the knowledge of everyone. But Anansi wanted these stories for himself so that he could share them with humanity, because he found the world boring, monotone and devoid of entertainment. Nyami then told his son that he was willing to give them to him, but the price to pay was high and offered to make a deal for the ownership of these stories. Anansi whose ambition didn't wavered, was then given four supposedly impossible tasks to accomplish, which he confidently accepted without complaint as he knew that he was clever enough to easily perform these tasks. The first thing to acquire was Maburo the Hornets. The spider started off by cutting a gourd and made a small hole on its surface, then poured water on himself and on the tree where the hornets were living. Anansi then told the hornets that they were foolish to stay in the rain, and that he would offer his calabash as a shelter. Once all of them had flew into the gourd, Anansi quickly plugged up the hole and simply took the hornets to his father. Next in his list, Anansi cut a bamboo pole and went to visit Onini, the great python. He told Onini that he and his wife had been arguing over whether the python was shorter or longer than the pole. Onini suggested that they would know if Anansi just measure him against the pole, then stretched all the way to both extremities. Everything going as he had planned, Anansi then convinced Onini to be tied up to the pole in order to keep him straight, because its tail always coiled back every time the snake tried to stretch out. And just like he had wished, 
the spider tied Onini to the stick then carried the bound python to the sky god. To catch the fairy after giving some thoughts, Anansi carved a doll and covered it with some sticky gum tree. Then put the doll under a tree nearby the place where fairies were believed to gather, and set a trap to lure the fairy around the sticky doll. Inside of a big bowl, Anansi put some mashed yams reputed to have been the favorite food of the fairy which he placed next to the doll. When the fairy came around and ate the yams, she thanked the doll which of course couldn't reply. Annoyed by the supposed bad manners of the doll, the fairy struck it with both hands and ended up getting stuck to the gum that covered the doll, allowing Anansi to easily capture the fairy. For his fourth and last task, Anansi was asked to capture a ferocious leopard. In order to make it happen, the trickster spider went to the area where the leopard could be found, and dug a pit which he covered with branches and leaves, and left the area knowing that the feline would eventually stumble into the deep hole. When he came back the next day, he found the leopard into the pit and offered his help. Anansi bent a tall tree toward the ground and tied it in place. Then tied his spider web on top of the tree and dropped the other end into the hole so that the leopard could hold it. When Anansi released the rope that held down the tree, it sprang upward leaving the animal dangling in the air helplessly. The Spider-Man had no trouble capturing and bringing the animal to the Sky God, who agreed that the price had effectively been paid. From that day forward, all stories of the world belonged to Anansi who decided to share them with humanity. Another of Anansi's story explains why some people are more intelligent and wiser than others. As he was already renowned for his wisdom, no one ever done anything on their own without first seeking Anansi's advice. However, not everyone seemed very grateful for the spider's wise counsel. To punish people for their lack of gratitude, Anansi decided to stop giving advice and to repossess all the wisdom he had given out for so long. He went from house to house collecting all the bits of wisdom, and sealed the portions he had collected inside a large pot, which he then planned to conceal at the top of the tallest tree where he thought would be the safest place to hide the jar which contained the knowledge of the world. When he tried to climb up the tree, the dangling container prevented him from getting a good grip. And after several unsuccessful attempts, his son who had followed him noticed that the pot was bigger than what his father could ever handle, and suggested that he might have an easier time if he hung the pot on his back. Realizing that his son was right indeed, Anansi angrily resumed his attempts with the pot on his back and quickly reached the top of the tree. But as he tried to tie the pot, he got clumsy and let it slip from his hands and smashed on the ground, setting free all the bits of wisdom that he had stored. People came from all over to snatch up as much wisdom as they possibly could. The first to arrive were able to collect a great amount of wisdom, while the latecomers found very little left to collect. In a slightly different version of the tale, Anansi ignored his son's advice and fell to the ground scattering his collection of wisdom. A significant number of African folk tales feature a trickster figure, whose achievements appeal to the people's imagination. The Ashanti for their part have Anansi the trickster god, who managed to attain the title to all stories of the world after winning a trial set on him by his father. And ever since, he has been held in such high regard by the Ashanti people at the point that they assigned the generic name Anansism, or spider stories to a class of folktales distinguished from mythologies, and named after the spider trickster himself. Originating in West Africa, Anansi stories were part of an exclusively oral tradition, and became such a prominent and familiar part of Ashanti oral culture that they eventually included many kinds of fables. In similar fashion, oral tradition is what introduced the spider tales to the rest of the world, as they were eventually transmitted to the Caribbean and Jamaica via the people that were enslaved during the transatlantic slave trade.
but the Jamaican versions of these stories are some of the most well-preserved, because Jamaica had the largest concentration of enslaved Ashanti in the Americas, and which resemble quite well to their Ashanti origins. Each tale carry their own proverbs at the end to wrap it up and reveal the hidden morality behind the story, which is an ultimate corpus of knowledge passed down as folklore over several generations. As a result, the importance of Anansi didn't socially diminish when slaves were brought to the United States, but he was instead celebrated as a symbol of slave resistance and survival. In the Caribbean, the spider trickster is seen as a culture hero who was believed to have played a multifunctional role in the slaves' lives, as well as inspiring strategies of resistance against slavery. These spider tales enabled enslaved Africans to establish a sense of continuity with their African past, and offered them the means to transform and assert their identity within the boundaries of captivity. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video regarding the popular spider god Anansi. If that's a case consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe as it really means a lot. And as always. Stay curious.